Alrighty, so today we're going to talk about St. Louis City in the Moving Forward series episode, and if you recall just a week ago, I was actually in St. Louis, and I went to watch St. Louis City take on the Houston Dynamo at City Park, and honestly, I would highly recommend for anyone that, that uh, wants to visit an MLS stadium, that City Park is definitely right up there in the top of the list. I mean, between that stadium and Allianz Field, probably among the best MLS stadium that the league could offer i mean just just a, a great stadium and also a great atmosphere as well and also in a great location too i mean it's not, actually not that far away from downtown st louis and and nearby there's also the the old st louis union station where if you need to get something to eat that that's a place that you can uh get something to eat as well but overall just, just a great low location in, in general as well and even though it is a little bit expensive because you know st louis tickets are relatively expensive because of the demand that that this team draw draw and we know that this team sells out game in and, and game out and, and it's not like one of those teams that usually have empty seats and they said it's sold out just because of the pay uh the pay attendance they do actually sell though and there's not a lot of em empty seats and when i went to watch the dynamo take on st louis even though there was maybe a little bit of empty seats it was still relatively full compared to what I have seen um, in terms of, of games that I've heard that it's been sold out. But there, there's definitely a case that it's not with uh, the amount of empty seats that is. But anyway, uh, with me, me keep rambling about my recent trip uh, to St. Louis. Let's actually talk about this season for St. Louis City. So no doubt that this was a huge regression that they, they suffered this season. And again, it's very similar to what we, we saw with Austin uh, after an incredible uh, second season that they had. They def definitely uh, suffer a bit of a regression. And for St. Louis, you know, there was no doubt that they were going to suffer a, a bit of a regression. There's no doubt that they're going to suffer a sophomore uh, slump. Though I will say that for St. St. Louis, you know, as I mentioned uh, a lot recently, there's no doubt the future is bright for the St. Louis team, and there's no doubt that I think this season, out of all the team in the Western Conference that that miss out in the playoffs, they might be the team that it, it is in the the best position to make it back into the playoffs next season. But with that being said, uh, they have a record of eight, three, and twelve, and actually that is not correct. It's actually eight, thirteen, and twelve. Remember. St. Louis, at one point, they, they were like the draw kings uh, of MOS. It looked like they were on point uh, of breaking the, the MOS record. And there's no doubt that they, they definitely have drawn uh, less games compared to what we see in the beginning of the season. But still, uh, they had 13 draws this season with 12 uh, losses and have 37 points. Uh, they scored 49 goals this season, but they gave up 59 goals. The defense was definitely a huge problem for St. Louis. And I argue it could have been worse if it wasn't for Roman Burt. Berkey uh, being in, in goal, and they have a goal differential, and again, this is this is wrong too, it's not plus 10, it's actually uh, min minus 10 in terms of the, the goal differential that they had, and they're currently 12 in the Western Conference. Now, as we, we know, what happened la last season, just an incredible season for St. St. Louis, almost broke the, the record uh, of, the, of the most points by an expansion team, but they did uh, become the first ever expansion team to finish at the top uh, of the respective conference in their first year, finishing in first place with a 17-5 and 12 record and finish uh, with 56 points. Now, when you look at the top goal scorers, despite the fact that they score uh, a lot of goals uh, this season, well, I say a lot of goals, it's kind of right uh, around the, the average mark, maybe a, a above average in terms of goal scoring we see in, in the league. Uh, they don't really have a, a guy that is a prolific goal, goal scorer. This has been a team that's kind of shared their, their, their amount of goals between a lot of players. So you got three players that is currently tied at first place with five goals, Jean Claus, Edward Lubin, and Cedric Toysher. And then you got Simon Betcher and Nicolette Forenson with four goals for the St. Louis City side. Top assist leader, it's uh, Marcel Hart. Hardo, you know, he it seems like he was averaging it says almost every sing single game ever since he become a St. Louis City player with seven assists, followed by Edouard Lubin with four assists, Cedric Teuscher with four assists, Indiana Vasla with four assists, and Chris Durkin with three assists to rounds up the top five. Uh, best win of the season, and this might be just re recency bias, but I'm going to actually go with the 3-0 the win that they had against the Houston Dynamo. I, I was also kind of de debate, should I maybe include the one I went to, or or the, the one where they won 2-1 uh, against the Alley Galaxy? I mean, the, that 2-1 win against the Galaxy, remember, there was no Ricky Pooch in, in that game. I, I did think that they really missed him in, in that one to make a difference. And you could maybe argue, you could say the same thing about the Houston Dynamo. They also missed some key players in this game, but... 
you know, the difference between between uh, St. Louis in that game against the Galaxy compared to this one against the Dynamo is that they kept a clean sheet in, in this one, and they weren't really threatening that that much um, at time in the game against the Houston Dynamo. Just a really complete performance by the St. Louis City side, something that we have rarely seen uh, this season. And again, it might be just recency bias. It just might be just because uh, uh, of me recently attend the game, and that kind of makes you wonder. Maybe I should should go back to St. Louis and attend more St. St. Louis City games since I kind of gave them some some good charm of them getting one well, their 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 best win of the the season at home with a three nothing win against the Dynamo team that not only uh you know this is a Dynamo team that had had a good season but this is one of the toughest team to beat uh when you're playing them at home this is a team that 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 love to play on the road they have among the most wins on the road that the season and they always play hard when they're on on the road so the fact that St. Louis was able to dispatch them. Uh, like like that. I mean, that was very impressive. Uh, the worst loss of the season. Um, there was a couple of ones that I could could have chose. I'm gonna go with the four one loss that they they had uh, uh against the Vancouver Whitecaps. I could have also chose the three nothing loss that they had against the Colorado Rapids. Keep in mind, this is during the time when St. Louis was just having an absolute horrendous uh run of form. That was at one point they they had a nine game winless uh run and then uh there's also a point where they only like won one out of the the next 13 games so yeah when you basically spend almost uh a quarter of the season without getting getting a a win or not even a quarter of season but pretty much almost more than a, a third of the season only getting one wins yeah it's gonna be very hard to try to make it to the playoffs out of that even if the playoffs ex- ex- extended like what we've seen right now but yeah oh uh, that that was not a great performance that that was actually uh uh, tie as, as the ugliest loss that St. Louis has had at home. The other one, of course, is the free nothing loss against Colorado. And then we also remember what happened last year in the playoffs against Sporting Casey when they also lost 4-1 in game number one. And yeah, just overall, just that that was that was kind of the, the rock bottom uh, point, or at least close to the rock bottom point, point of St. Louis season. The team just, just have no identity whatsoever. It looked like they were going, going through the motion and eventually it cost Bradley Parnell's job. Now, in terms of average attendance, 22,433. That's kind of the listed capacity that they, they mentioned, despite the fact that um, on the, 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 the Wikipedia website says the capacity is 22,500. But every game has been 22,433. And again, that's kind of the listed capacity according to the team website. So I'm going to assume that it's a sellout every single game. And it is. I mean, every single game at St. Louis is a sellout. Uh, and as I meant, mentioned when they mean it's a sellout it actually means it i mean i don't see a lot of empty seats inside that that stadium even when the team were not doing well the, the fans still pack pack that stand and it, it just kind of shows you how how good of a soccer city it is in st louis and there's a re- reason why that you know it was so l- overdue uh to have st louis be an expansion team with all the soccer uh history that that has has gone on in the the st louis area even going uh way before uh mls day that is now, in terms of MVP of this team, it's got to be Roman Berkey. I mean, Roman Berkey is still the MVP uh, of of this this team. And although there's no doubt that he was not as good as he was last season, being the goalkeeper of the year, he still had had, had games where he was just sta- standing on on his head. And and again, the 59 goals that that uh, St. Louis City has conceded, most of those I'm not gonna, gonna put Roman Berkey on. Maybe there was a couple I could kind of blame him for, but most of them was just his, his defense just kind kind of hung him out. Out to dry, and there's no doubt that Roman Berkey is still considered one of the best goalkeeper in uh, this league. Uh, disappointment, yeah, there was definitely a lot I could could have chose, but I'm gonna go with Sam Adanaran. And again, you know, I, I gotta stop picking uh, disappointment in terms of players that are no longer uh, on this team. But it, it's kind of easy tar- target because there's a reason why they're no longer with this team at, at half of the season. And Sam Adanaran, again, what a disappointing. Uh, uh, season not not just for him but just what a complete fall fall from grace from Sam and Darren Rand. I mean last se- season he 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 was absolutely amazing alongside uh with Nicholas Giacchini but this season I mean I don't know what ha- happened I think I've heard that that he definitely had some poor body la- language in term terms of him and Bradley Carnell and also break doesn't really bring a good locker room culture to a point where where we also heard his work ethics what wasn't very well that's kind of the reason why he, he was kind of in in the doghouse and even with him going to philly and you would think that that was kind of kind of improve him and get himself back to the good form that he 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 was last season for st louis uh no instead he pretty much have not done anything 
for for Philly ever since he went to the Union. In fact, he hasn't scored a goal for the Union up to to that point. It's been just a huge fall from grace or from Sam and Darren, a player that looked like could be on the cut. Though, so maybe being on the national team with him doing very well for St. Louis and maybe even getting sailed off to Europe to a point where he's kind of almost been been a, 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 a non factor as what we saw with St. Louis City and in the latter part of the season with the Philadelphia Union as well. Now, in terms of young player to watch, I, I gotta say, you know, it, it's great the the fact that they actually did s- sign a, a, a good uh, young player doing the, the summer transfer window, St. Louis is, because I, I really I can't think of it, you know, you know, they do have some some good young young talent for, out of their, their academy, but I don't think none of them really uh, is to a point where when they being in the first team that they really can kind, of, kind of sparkle uh you so I'm I'm gonna go with uh one of their new summer signing in Jake Gerwood Reich and this is not a big surprise you know when we heard about about the this signing he is one of the most exciting if not the most exciting player and the most promising player coming out of the A League and we, we have seen that a lot lot of MLS team has really started to, to take the A League more seriously in terms of getting a lot of uh these players from the A League and there's no doubt that you know in, in the short amount of time I I think Jake Gerwood Reich has looked re- really good. They, they started to kind of put him more as a center back lately rather than a defensive midfielder. I guess maybe, uh, maybe that they need some some support in the defense, and I'm not surprised by that because as I'll talk about in just a bit, <laughs> that was a huge issue for the St. St. Louis City side. So there's no doubt that I think he could get more minutes heading into next season. And a guy that you know, there's a reason why why he might be the the, the best attacking. Uh, talent coming out of the A League, and he's definitely show, showing it uh, in in MLS at least in the early early part of his his career. Now, what went right for the St. Louis City side? So yeah, uh, as I mentioned, the summer si- signings that they they made, it, they got most of them uh, performing straight off the back. So guys like Cedric Toysher, uh Marcel Hardo, and even Simon Betcher, all those 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 three guys that they of course signed signed during the summer transfer window has hit in in a big way, and those three guys are going to be be key. Key contributor uh, for the St. Louis City side, and not to mention with Edward Lubin, look like he, he's he's back after he's been been spending more time on the IR than than uh, on the the pitch this season. Uh, there could be be a case that the the attack could be 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 back to where they were last season, and that's another thing I'll mention that went right. It looks like the attack looked very potent in the second half of the season, kind of similar to what we saw last season as well, where the attack was definitely one of the strength for for St. Louis. Um, and it feels like now that it's it's kind of back to where where it should be uh, in the second half of the season compared to to last year. And then of course, uh, there there's definitely some promise in the future based on the post leads up performance. Again, you know this is the thing that you know we gotta always be care- careful about how when a team performs relatively well in the second half of the season, it doesn't mean it automatically translate into next season as well. We've seen before where teams perform well in the second half of the season even though they they're long eliminated. And you were thinking that that they would carry that into next season, and no, they did not. So that's going to be one thing that I I think St. Louis will need to do heading into next season. They need to have a strong strong start and not prove that this incredible run in the second half of the season is just completely a fluke, and and it's just because they they have no pressure uh to to deal with with them pretty much already uh scraping uh the the barrel as the season goes along. So what went wrong for this team? As I mentioned, they waited too late in terms of implementing these signings. And I've, I've mentioned it so many, many times. And I'll once again beat the dead horse again. If they meet, make those move a little bit earlier, they bring in the, the likes of Cedric Torture, Marcel Ardo, Simon Betcher, and all these guys that they signed in, in the, the summer transfer window a little earlier, they would definitely still be in the play, playoff race uh, right, right now. But because they made those move a little bit too too late, late to do so, it it was just almost impossible for them to 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 make it uh a, a run and and even when the other thing I also think that went wrong for for them is that even though they had some glimmer of hope that 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 they could they could make it to the playoffs and they lose in in a in a, in a crucial game against Minnesota and I argue maybe that could also be be argued as the worst loss of the season I mean that game against Minnesota at home with the way that they they play relatively well. Yeah, that that has to stay with them lo- losing at home in Minnesota. That that really absolutely just kill any sort of faint playoff hope that St. Louis City still have left in this team. Uh, the defense, especially the the center back p- partnering, is bad, and I put that in all all caps because yeah, you know I will say that this this was a problem last season a- as well. I mean this was really beginning of become a problem in the second half of the season where you know while Roman Berkey was still making some incredible save. 
the defense will, will start to fall apart for the St. Louis City side. And, you know, they try to to adjust, adjust that a little bit uh, this offseason, and it has not worked whatsoever. I mean, you, you, you know, there, there's definitely a lot of question mark in terms so, uh, of the defense uh, at, as well. You know, they've been changing uh, different center back par- partnerships, see if it, of course, worked out. None of them seems to... To work out, they even bring in Henry Kessler and hope hope that he can revitalize uh his good form that he had in the, the in his beginning time with New England and no he hasn't done that exactly so there's no doubt that that is going to be the main area that they they have to 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 fi- fix uh in terms of uh, of the, heading into the next off season uh as well and then not to mention again just digging themselves in in a deep hole horrid start to the season as I mentioned they they were drawing way too many games in the beginning of the season. And then those draws started to become losses. And once they become losses, that's when they went on that nine-game winless run with six of them be, being lost. So when you go in the beginning of the season with a lot of draws, and then those draws turn into the loss and go on another incredible bad run of form, it is no wonder why St. Louis never recovered from, from the, the incredible, uh, terrible start that they had in the beginning of the season, no matter how good they were in the second half of the season. Now, moving forward for the St. Louis side, there's no doubt that, you know, as I mentioned, this might be the team in the the the, the West that is most likely to bounce back and made it to the playoffs out of all the team uh, in the West that, that that didn't make it, and that point still stay, stay valid. As long as they fix that that, that defense, uh, there's no doubt that this team could be, be not only be a playoff contender, but could be right back where they were uh, just last season, right near at the top of the Western Conference. Uh, again, they still need to, to fix that defense. That is going to be one area that they absolutely will, will, will be looking to, to try try to, to, to sort out this offseason. And then the final thing, and this is one that I haven't met, mentioned a lot, but this is going to be something that St. Louis is going to have, have a big decision that's going to made, and especially their sporting director, Lutz. He's going to have a big decision he's going to have to, to make about this, and that is, do you keep John Hackworth and promote him as the permanent uh, head coaching role. Now, one thing I have heard about John Hackworth, at least from the media wise, a lot, a lot of the the media member ha, uh, ha, has praised John Hackworth and, and the good job that he's done with St. Louis, and rightfully so. I mean, he has had a pretty good re- record ever since he took charge of this team. Maybe part of that is because of the new new uh, interim head coach boost, but also he definitely uh, put a little bit bit of a different tactics and maybe a little bit more stability in terms of the tactics one of the things that the st louis side has really evolved this season compared to last season under bradley carnell they no longer play that red bull energy drink kind of chaos soccer that we saw saw them play uh last season and even in the beginning of this season uh as well and that that you know under john hackworth it seems like they started to become more of a possession team and 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 be a little bit more patient in term terms of uh, their their build up. I mean, there were there are still times that they there are signs that they still play some, some a little bit of that energy drink soccer with them being direct. But from what I've seen at least uh, under John Hyde, where they're they're definitely much more patient when it comes to the build. And maybe that's kind of the thing that they need to approach because I think teams have started to figure out out um in terms of how to play that uh energy drink soccer kind of style that 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 uh, St. Louis has had. And not to mention, you know, there's a reason why this energy drink soccer style hasn't really kind of worked out so well in this league. I mean, just as the New York Red Bulls. I mean, it's, it, it works out in a way where you could get a, 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 a okay regular season, but it's not going to work out when you go go into the playoffs. And and I think, I think St. Louis kind of found that that out in a big way, and that's why they, they make that that move. So there's that. But obviously, from what I also heard from from, from fans, um, you know, it's a mixed reaction between the St. Louis City fan base when it comes to, to John Hackworth. There's some fan base that have said that, that they, he's done a good job to keep his job, but I've also heard a majority of the fan base say he hasn't done a, 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 a good job um, and that there's, there's definitely a better option. And those are kind of valid point as well because, you know, as much as I've also said about him uh, being being more tactically sound compared to Bradley Carnell in the beginning of the season. There were times where John Hatworth had made some some downfounded dis- decision in terms of the tactics, and then also the substitution pattern just at times didn't really ca- kind of make make sense uh, whatsoever. So, yeah, again, this this is the big decision that St. Louis ha- has to make. I do think that, you know, it, it, when, when, when I look at past interim head, head coach that done a good job, at least steer the, the, the team in the right direction, usually we have seen mo- most of those teams able to, to, to promote those interim head coach into a permanent role. So if that, of course, is the pattern, then I expect 
back, uh, St. Louis is going to follow that and they're going to per- promote John Hackworth as the permanent head coach. But there's no doubt that there's going to be a be, be a big debate of, you know, is there maybe better guys, uh, better, maybe better candidate out there uh, that, that could be better than, than John Hackworth. And if that is the, the case, can they, they replicate what John Hackworth had at least built a foundation of this t- team? to succeed heading into next season that that's going to be be a very very important uh pieces besides the fact that they need to fit fin- fix the defense and also not to mention the attack look v- very promising and all the signing that they've done in the summer have looked very pro- promising and look like could could do do very well heading into next season as well but anyway hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you like smash the subscribe button as always let me know in the comments below what do you think of this video and if you're a st louis fan what do you think is the mvp disappointment no player to watch what went right what went wrong and also moving forward how is this team gonna look heading into next season but until then hope you guys enjoy this video and i will see you guys next time